I'm Stephen Bendenu. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have rather disturbing news today uh, coming out of, uh, of course, out of European different news agencies, actually on, on, on a variety of different news agencies in Europe, uh, as, as well as some very shocking video footage that you're watching now in the background. You will see also, if you look closely, the English caption of the Arabic man's voice there. What you are looking at right now is, uh, according to the video and according to the, and I'm actually using an article from International Business Times that posted the video uh, as well. They had copied it and posted it on their website. This is uh, uh, allegedly two Russian spies that entered into Syria and the jihadists, the ISIS group jihadists there are uh, uh, about to have the, the man executed. And the sad thing is, is they're going to use a child to do the execution. It just goes to show how low and how evil and how wicked uh, the Islamic uh, regime is. Uh, this group ISIS here uh, in, in uh, allowing a, uh, and it's estimated the boy is about 10 years of age that carries out the execution. Uh, the video was titled Uncovering an Enemy Within the Seven Minutes of Footage Released by ISIS Propaganda Machine. Al Hayat Media begins by showing uh, the, uh, uh, they begin by showing uh, the separate confessions of two Russian speaking men addressing the camera. The two claim they infiltrated ISIS uh, to gather information for Russian intelligence agency. Uh, the Federal Security Service. One says he was tasked with killing a leading Islamic figure. The last segment of the video filmed outdoors. The two men are seen kneeling while behind them stands a jihad fighter flanked by an armed child. The gunman says the two are to be executed as spies and pushes the child forward. Then the boy appears to carry out the killings with two close range shots to the men's heads shortly followed by another to a couple, uh, 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 couple, couple degree shots uh, as well. So rather, as I said, very, very shocking indeed. Uh, the video that you're seeing here, you will not be seeing the actual ex execution itself. Uh, they, they just show a photo afterwards. The, the, the boy is with his hands up uh, rejoicing over the death of these two men. Uh, so it's very sad indeed to see that youth are exposed to such violence and such extremism. So... Uh, very, 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 very dis, dis, uh, distasteful and, and, and quite, uh, just quite barbaric as we find from the Islamic uh, regimes, uh, the jihadists around the world. It is more uh, things that will be going on continuously. Uh, there's a lot of security being beefed up around Europe. Uh, according to different news articles coming out as well, uh, it, Prime Minister Netanyahu has asked all Jews from all over the world to return to their homeland, back to Israel. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure exactly what all that entails. I do know that those that are true Jews, or, or, or I say true Jews, you're actually Jewish by birth. Uh, you definitely will be able to go back home. Now, whether or not that will be a door open to those that are believing Jews in uh, Yeshua as their Messiah, that is Jesus, I cannot say the answer to that, but uh, he has said for all Jews to return to their homeland. Um, and other news as well, let me bring you another interesting report here real quick. Uh, Russian reaction to the EU's counter-propaganda channel uh, hints at fear, according to the article posted here in, um, uh, in, in the uh, Moscow Times. A uh, very interesting article, I might add. It says, Russian foreign minister slammed the European Union's plan to create a Russian-language television channel in Europe as an attack on free speech, an official reaction that analysis says was tinged with insecurity. We've always taken a positive position on the freedom of speech, but the EU plans for creating a kind of counter-propaganda channel can hardly correspond to the concept of free speech. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Alexander uh, Mishkov said Monday in comments carried by state news agency TASS, uh, the creation of the channel, an initiative that has so far gained the support of Latvia, Britain, Denmark, Estonia, uh, Lithuania, is set to be discussed at the meeting of the EU Foreign Ministers on January 19th. Lavinia's Foreign Minister Edgards uh, Rikeviks 
announced a project uh, uh, in an interview with BuzzFeed in late December saying the channel would offer very factually accurate news to counterbalance the news offered by Russian television, which he described as very aggressive and what can no longer be considered normal news or normal journalism, more information warfare and propaganda. Well, you know, in something like this, it is kind of obvious it's very much a bias and it's very much a propaganda machine. I have to agree with the Russians on this here because they're making it quite clear. I mean, this is this again is going to be an EU-ran television station. They may put it in a private private atmosphere, but it will be EU-ran. And of course, Russia, just as Israel, is biased about their own people. And uh, in their own country and their own welfare. So uh, yes, there there is a bias there, just like the EU is biased about the EU. The United States is biased about the United States. Uh, so quite quite frankly, I can understand the the uh, Russian president and of course the uh, the prime minister there being upset about this idea uh, and it being used as a propaganda machine to the eastern uh, states in in East Europe. And, of course, with the power to be able to broadcast to all the former Soviet states as well. Uh, so it definitely, no doubt, will be a propaganda machine. Also, uh, just to bring to your attention there, those that died in the, uh, the newspaper attack in France, um, the, uh, uh, let me see if I can, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, as the Jewish world mourns, uh, take a look into the lives of, this is in Israel National News, were murdered by an Islamic terrorist in a kosher supermarket in Paris. Uh, of course, there were four Jews murdered there. Keep, keep it in mind, too, we realize that there have been not only Jewish people that were killed in the Paris attacks, there were a lot of uh, good people that were killed that were not Jewish. They were from other uh, nations, uh, from, the, from the French-speaking people and, and their land there, and their lives mean just as much in the sight of God as the lives of the Jewish people as well. For we know, we take it from the very quotation of, of Jesus, where he says, not even a sparrow can fall to the ground that it is he your heavenly Father doesn't know about it. So every life does mean very much indeed. Uh, in this particular case here, we're just quoting from the, uh, from the Israel National News there, highlighting the four Jewish people that were killed in the massacre of the kosher uh, store there. And, and, and it is obvious in both cases, even at the news, uh, uh, the, the news uh, reporting place there, Hib Hibbo at his place, as well as at the kosher uh, um, deli there, the target was to try to kill Jews. I mean, naturally, in a news place, you're not going to have as many, um, uh, you won't have the number or you'll have more of a mixed group in there, not just Jews, because it is a news, uh, news, um, a news printing company there. So therefore, the news company there will have a multitude of workers there. And unfortunately, they died right along with their Jewish friends there and no doubt were close people and close uh, with each other as well. Anyhow, just topping this out, though, in the article here, uh, Johan Cohen, who was age 20, who died uh, in the days before, before his death, Cohen joined millions of other Facebook users in posting, uh, Je suis Charlie, I am Charlie, on this page and homepage to the 12 people murdered in last Wednesday's bloody attack by jihadists on the... On the uh, uh, Centrical Weekly Charlie uh, Hebdo uh, site there. Uh, two days after the strike, Cohen was among those killed in the assault on the kosher supermarket. Very sad to hear that. Yoav uh, Hatab, a student pursuing his education in Paris and the son of uh, Tunisia's chief rabbi, Hatab was sent to France by his parents on the belief that life for a Jew would be safer there than in Tunisia. Uh, heroically, he tried to disarm Kalabili when he burst into the store, but after a brief struggle in which he was unable to take away the terrorist gun, he was shot in the head, uh, becoming the first of the four victims. Initial reports suggest that Cohen was likely the one who tried to disarm the terrorist, but it appears that it was uh, Hatab instead. Also, and I'm not reading the full articles, we'll post this on our Facebook page where you can see this as well. Uh, Francois uh, Michel Saad, Saadad, 
uh, was born in Tunisia. He is 63, was retired senior manager and a father of two, both of whom live in Israel. Saad had planned on visiting the Venice uh, Venice this week uh, to celebrate his wife's 60th birthday. He was an extremely upright man who led his life for the happiness of his family, who never made a fuss, an exemplary husband and dad, one of his friends said about him. Um, and then uh, Philippi Braham, uh, who was age 45, Braham was an advertising manager at a computer uh, consultancy. A religious Jew who attended the uh, Kachin Synagogue south of Paris, his children attended a Jewish school in another southern uh, Parisian suburb, uh, uh, Montrouge, where Colaby killed a policewoman a day before launching his attack.